hopefully they're going to be useful. I'm also going to do, as you may have seen already, a little introductory talk before each of the lectures each week just to go through the main messages. So to start off with, given you, I guess all four of you know each other, but I don't know you very well, let's um, find out a bit about each other. So Alexandra, given you're on the far left, do you want to tell me a bit about yourself? Okay. okay. Um, well, I am living in Dubai. Um, I am from Yorkshire. All oh, right. Um, I don't know what else. I work for a security company in HR. Um, I have a bachelor's in legislative studies from the University of Hull. Um, and I have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> What's your cat called? He's called Dougal. Right. He's Scottish. He's a Scottish bull. <laughs> So, um, so there you go. There's great. And in terms of um, this course, uh, climate change impact adaptation, what what kind of background do you have in? What's your knowledge of climate change? Oh, I don't have a great deal. I don't have any background. Mm -hmm. um, so my knowledge is really just um, from the sustainability module that we did last year. Uh, so I'm starting at this, um, I think, in a different position from the other girls because they're already working sort of in the field mm -hmm. and I'm sort of beginning um, with an aim to work um, in a, an NGO in the future once I've got my qualification. Great. Well, I hope, I mean, the course is designed um, from a face-to-face -face course that I run here in Edinburgh, and it's that's been running for five years, and the whole kind of structure of it is um, for people who don't necessarily have a background at all in climate change science, so hopefully you'll find it accessible. Um, certainly the proof of the last five years is that uh, for people like Courtney and Indira who do have um, some background in climate change, they should get a lot out of it, I hope you do, but certainly for you, as well, Alexandra, I, I, I would hope if you do all the reading and look at all the, the yeah. tedious videos of me and my colleagues, um, hopefully it'll all make sense as we go along. Okay. Dave, you can call me Alex, by the way. Okay, I was going to ask which you prefer. Oh, to yeah, Alex is, is, is my um, informal name. <laughs> Good. Okay. okay. Courtney, t tell us a bit about you. Um, yeah, I'm a Canadian, originally from the Toronto area, and I'm currently living and working in North Iceland in a town called Akureyri of about 17,000 people. And I work at a place called the Conservation of Arctic Flora and Fauna, which is the biodiversity working group of the Arctic Council. Mm -hmm. um, and so I work largely with biodiversity issues, but also touch quite a bit on climate change mostly as it affects biodiversity, but um, I have no formal scientific training. I have a bachelor in journalism um, and mass communications, and I got that from Ottawa. And uh, I used to work at the Federal Environment Ministry in Canada until I moved to this position here. And um, I have some volunteer work on the climate change issue. I um, back in 2007, I was lucky enough to attend the IP, not the IP, sorry, the UNFCCC um, climate change meeting in Bali, Indonesia, as a youth observer. So got nice and jaded there. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it was a really great, really great experience. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Frustrating, but really great. So, um, just sort of not really scientifically fully literate but uh, I'm comfortable enough with the the topics I think so. yeah so, so um, my experience my the last cop I went to was um, Copenhagen and that put me off <laughs> from then on it was really um, disappointing but like you say it's an amazing experience to go to a cop it's really good Indira do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself uh, yes, so, well, hello everybody once again. Um, my name is Indira, I'm from Kazakhstan and um, I work uh, for uh, oil and gas company here in Kazakhstan. 
in a sustainable development department. Um, I don't have much uh, work experience in this field. It's just like maybe two years that I'm with this company in that department. Uh, it also, like, it's a whole my work experience <laughs> for now. Mm, well, yeah, my background is a bachelor in marine biology and aquaculture. Very so good. I, yeah, I studied here in Kazakhstan. Uh, well, uh, I find quite interesting uh, the the work what I'm doing the um, the all the scope of this and um, that's why actually was the reason I get this course mm -hmm. and um, so good I think uh, yeah that's it for now yeah. <laughs> not much. Oh, my, I've gone into the darkness here. I'm saving energy. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell. Um, I'll, give, I'll give a slight bit of my background. So I did marine biology originally. That was my first degree. Um, and then my PhD was working in the Southern Ocean on warming there in the uh, 90s. And since then, I've been working on various aspects of climate change, mainly on greenhouse gas emissions, things like warming in the Arctic in particular. So, um, Pinterest the court yeah. <laughs> it's uh, really one of the places where we're seeing the biggest changes and, and the biggest threat, not just to the Arctic itself, but obviously the repercussions for the, the atmosphere and our whole planet are major. So, um, so yeah, I've been at Edinburgh now for 12 years, um, and I run the MSc in Carbon Management, which this course is, is, a, is a part of. Um, and also, I'm, I'm head of postgraduate teaching at Edinburgh. Uh, so, so yeah, really looking. This is my first online course. Um, so you are unfortunately my guinea pigs <laughs> to try this course. Um, so the main thing um, to ask the three of you now, and hopefully Alana will join us soon if Stuart can sort her out, is um, about the course as it exists. Hopefully, you've all had a look at. Um, logged on and looked at the calls online and obviously it's a bit different to the one you would have done last semester. This one, because it was an existing course, has a lot of content already and it's on a platform which is designed to be much more content rich. So there are um, videos, as I said, video segments for you to watch which are linked to um, lecture slides and the lecture slides, some of those are animated, some of them um, have uh, text to go through. And the idea in terms of the week by week schedule, so Indira asked about this in terms of how it works because it looks like a massive load of stuff, I know. The idea is that um, the schedule which I've got on my wall here and I think on, on the learn page for this course, uh, you've got the kind of week by week schedule. And what I would like you to do um, is go through, so basically it's two lectures a week. So go to the course, look at say, today, lecture one, lecture one. And if you work through lecture one, you'll see um, the video segments, you can watch them if you've got a good enough bandwidth connection, but if you haven't, you still should be able to see the slides themselves. Work through that lecture, and then each one has a message board at the end with an area which Courtney's already uh, posted um, something on the, the skeptics, I think, on there for lecture one, where we can debate some of the issues which have come out of the lecture. And the idea is for each week that we've got two of those. So each Tuesday we'll have a chat like this, talk about the, the reading you've done and the lecture materials just to um, deal with any queries you had with uh, the content, any things which should come up. We'll try and do the same on Thursday afternoons if this kind of time suits all of you uh, to cover the second lecture in the week. Um, so how does that sound and what are your experiences so far of logging on, can you all do that, and, and the materials that you've looked at. Alex, do you want to respond? Uh, yeah, logging on was fine. Um, mm. I've just sort of been trying to navigate my way around. Mm. I was slightly confused how on every week there seems to be like 40 threads mm. um, with links to these documents. Yes. Um, is there a reason for that? Yes, yeah, Stuart's fault. Stuart, you respond. <laughs> yes, um, that was an error that... Oh, okay, so I'm not missing something. Today, so hopefully when you go next time it's been corrected. Oh, okay. okay. In terms of the content, Alex, have you managed to um, look at some of the slides and go through maybe lecture one? 
Um, I haven't gone through it, but I did have a look um, that there were some websites and stuff, but I haven't actually read the content. Okay. Uh, Courtney, have you, have you had a chance to log in and have a look? Yep. Um, I went through, and initially I couldn't download the PDFs, but I think Stuart fixed that, so thank you for that. Um, right. And I just I went through, and I was able to follow the the first course, I guess, um, and uh, did the readings. Understood everything okay, I think. Um, when I I think there was some pre-reading as well. I haven't done all of that, but um, I I didn't find that to be too intuitive. Um, so I think I had to go to my my ed and then click on the learn and then click on the course and then I was like, oh, pre-readings, okay, so. <laughs> yep. But that's that's it so far. Seems good. Fantastic. Indira, how about you? Have you managed to log on? Yeah, I managed to log on and I uh, I've looked through the slides. Um, well, I, I didn't have any problems with downloading the PDF, so everything seems uh, like went smooth and fine. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't, uh, I didn't uh, watch all like the video uh, videos like completely. I just started and uh, get the uh, information that like what is it about. Well, everything looks uh, quite interesting, and uh, I was really uh, a little bit <laughs> impressed. <laughs> I would oh, say when oh, I saw the amount of the <laughs> of the material. <laughs> so that's why I was yeah. That's why I was like asking like, um, do we have to do this in like uh, in one week or? <laughs> mm. Yes. yes. So, so the the thing with the it is pretty content heavy um, the course uh, in terms of the the readings I mean Courtney's done done some already um, I put it just it tends to be the way I work because I put up a lot of um, papers and PDFs that I think are related and they are if you've got a none of you will have much spare time but if you're really interested in a particular topic a particular paper then look at it. Uh, but in general, um, the, the kind of the journal papers and things like that, I certainly don't expect you to, to read all of them and understand all of them. Um, it's really just to give some some depth where you want it if you want to go further in. The other thing I should say in terms of uh, the platforms, the, the, the counterintuitive issue that um, Courtney picked up on, that's because the university courses are all run through Learn. You're familiar with Learn from last semester. Um, but we've created this course in a separate platform. So for some things, you find you have to go in to Learn and get, basically in Learn is just the basic information on the assignments and uh, on some of the uh, scheduling. But most of all of the content pretty much is on this other site, on the one that you've logged into at uh, climate.ed.ac.uk. So um, we'll see how it works in terms of the balance of that. And obviously, I've been working with Stuart to put pretty much everything you need on the one place, which is at the climate.ed uh, site. But there's a little bit of university um, restriction in terms of having to have a learn page and having to have some stuff there. So hopefully, it will become more intuitive as we go. Stuart, did we get anywhere with Alana? I can't see her popping up yet. She's having bandwidth issues, so I sent her to the... She can watch the video on YouTube, even if she can't contribute live. Great. She might be able to watch the video there. Yeah. Um, um, are, the, are the rest of you know how to find the YouTube channel for the course? Have you visited that at all? No. no. Not yet. Okay. So, I went there, but I don't remember how. Right. <laughs> Stuart, what's the best way for everyone to find the YouTube channel for the course? Um, I'll just paste the link. <laughs> Wait a minute. Good. Hopefully this works. So, is, can everyone see the chat window? Yeah, I can see yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So, so the idea with that, there are several videos on it 
already, which is the, the kind of introductory um, things I was talking about, and generally me uh, throwing cameras around my office and trying to um, say something sensible. But what we're doing, uh, and it should be particularly useful where you've got bandwidth trouble and, or you drop off and, and, and can't um, talk on screen, that all of our conversations are going to be archived there. So um, hopefully it'll be useful. I think if we can't get Alana to access Hangouts, then we'll have to default to Skype in future. Um, but hopefully she can find a way to get on, is, it, is she simply not got enough even for audio, Stuart? Is that right? It, it seems so. I think she doesn't meet the minimum requirements, but she is able to watch it on YouTube, so she's okay. watching us at the minute. Right. <laughs> Hello, Alana. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so in terms of um, the things to discuss today, I think the main thing is is to do what you're, you're well, what, particularly what Courtney and Ian Deere have already done, but Alex, get, get on the site and, um, and work your way through. Uh, you'll find at the end um, some additional kind of recommended readings and a link to one of the message boards really discussing the skeptics' arguments, because the first lecture talks about the basics of climate science, uh, but then goes into some of the, the common skeptical arguments against anthropogenic, so man-made climate change. and uh, one of the, well, the first assignment, which I'm going to set next week, is all about that. It's all about um, taking one of these skeptics' arguments and doing a bit of research on it and writing it up as an essay uh, alongside the counter-argument from your research. So that's the assignment um, next week. So we'll talk about that next Tuesday. Anything else on the course so far that you wanted to talk about? Uh, or climate change? Yeah. I would like to ask us, um, okay, I see um, the lectures and uh, as I understood from from what you said is that we will have two lectures per week. Mm -hmm. uh, so it means like during uh, this week we will be reading all the materials and uh, the content of the lectures, uh, I mean two, the first two lectures. Yeah. And then next week we'll be uh, working on the assignment, if I understood correct. But any, uh, I mean, my question is if there will be any uh, other, how to say, tasks for like, like uh, last uh, semester we we were have to produce some blogs, post some materials, read certain material like every week. So uh, yeah. that's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Is there any uh, structure like this? Yeah. So so the the. The kind of formative assessments um, are are really this kind of thing. So the idea is that we we meet online twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursday afternoon, really to talk about how you're progressing with the material, and hopefully discuss as we go some of the issues. Like if you've found a skeptic's argument that you really think actually this sounds really quite convincing, we can discuss um, what the scientific counter argument is, but also things that keep coming up, like climate change is always in the news, so I want this this venue to enable all of you to, to talk about how it's affecting your jobs, but also things which have interested you. In terms of the summative part, it's really, the first part is this essay next week, and it'll be set next week, but I won't expect it uh, back from you uh, until a week later, so week three. Um, the, the other component is you making a video, so a climate change impacts video uh, for the place you work in or somewhere that's dear to you. Um, there's also um, an adaptation report that you need to do, which is a large piece towards the end of the course. And there are other couple of components which are hopefully going to be fun, but they're also kind of assessments. One is a multiple choice at the end of the course, just testing your general knowledge. But one thing um, that we've built in based on a technology uh, with Stuart called Labyrinth is a role-playing exercise. And this is basically something where you can work through it at any point. You'll see it's called Hot House Schools. And it's basically taking on different characters and going through um, a climate change impact scenario. So what you would do uh, in, in the case of that one, if you're a school teacher or a, um, a head of a school, and you were faced with your, your kids and your staff being at risk from heat waves, uh, what you would do. So that's, that's in there, and, and you can 
have a go at that at any time. And hopefully when we come to it in terms of the course, uh, you'll have lots of ideas which are better than, than mine in terms of the best adaptation strategy. Sorry, sorry, Alex, we lost you yeah, there. Yeah, sorry, my Wi-Fi just went all funny, but I'm back. <laughs> okay, so I was just explaining to Indira the, the, kind, the various interactions and assessments we've got. So the idea is um, that we have an interaction ideally on Google Hangouts if we, if we can um, all get enough bandwidth uh, yeah. twice a week. Uh, but beyond that, in terms of the assessments, there are three formal assessment components, but also some kind of, I hope, rather more fun ones. So there's one which is a role-playing exercise called Hot House Schools, uh, which um, you know, is something where uh, I'd really like all of you to, to try it out at some point during the course. And when we get to it, I think in week six or seven, um, actually that will be an exercise that will go through and take on different personas and see if we can increase the resilience of our children in schools mainly. So that's the kind of um, way it's going to, to run. In terms of readings and things, I'm not going to test you on whether you've done them. Um, it's really a case of your your formal assessments will depend on you doing some research and, and knowing the topic reasonably well to get um, to do successful uh, have a successful outcome in notes, but uh, really I'm, I'm very interested in in your own stories and that's why the, um, the assessments are pretty much designed, particularly the, the video which is the second assessment and the adaptation assessment which is the large report at the end. I really want that to come from your, your region or your expertise and your passion and actually learn, using what you learn in this course to really um, research uh, an area which is dear to your heart. So it may be for Courtney, probably will be the, the, the fauna and flora of the Arctic and, and uh, their vulnerability to climate change, but how we can increase, increase resilience. Uh, so that's, does that answer your question, Indira, in a very long-winded way? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, uh, um, actually, no, it's just, uh, um, it's uh, it's very well to, to have like a, a clear idea on what I have to do to in order to allocate my time because yeah. we also work and do other stuff uh, to allocate uh, the time. Yeah. Like what I have to like what I have to. Re for example, if we will have an um, online discussion for on Thursday, mm -hmm. then like what we are going to discuss. So I would be ready and read the. Um, uh, material which is uh, relevant and uh, be prepared. I don't know, do much, some research. So, I to to have something like this, like yeah, sure. So, so that what what I'd like us to do is on the Tuesday we discuss the first lecture of the week. So today we would be discussing lecture one, basically, um, and on Thursday uh, we would discuss lecture two. So basically, um, it would be. I would expect all of you to have gone through, and it will take probably an hour to go through the slides, and, and certainly um, if you look at all the videos, probably two hours to work your way through a whole lecture, um, and then we come to discuss it um, on the Tuesday or Thursday uh, online together. Um, so that would be how I, my lights keep going off, how I'd suggest um, we approach the week. Obviously, all of you have different demands on your time, and you know, if you if you find that it's easier to do a lecture over the weekend, and then we still talk about it on the Tuesday, then and that's you know, obviously uh, the way it will have to be and the way it will work. But that's the kind of format I'd expect. And with the assessments again in the schedule, they they've all got a set kind of deadline. Uh, so you've got um, between one and, and four weeks, depending on the, the length of the uh, assignment. And again, it's really just juggling that with your own timetables. So the set components are really when we meet like this online on a Tuesday and Thursday, my expectation will be that you've you've looked at the lecture material relating to that day, as it were, so we can discuss it. Sound reasonable? Yep. <laughs> Good. Okay, anything else from um, Courtney or Alex on queries you had? Um, I don't think I've got any right now. Great. Courtney, you look like you have, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was wondering because I've taken a look at the course schedule and I'll be almost entirely away the time between 
when we're supposed to be working on the video assignment. So um, I won't be able to film or do anything during that time, so I'm trying to work ahead. Um, mm -hmm. And the material that I was able to gather about what the assignment is supposed to be yeah. um, differed a little bit than what you just discussed. So I'm wondering um, what are the parameters around that assignment in particular? Um, yeah. Have you managed to get the um, the video assignment document? So it's basically the, um, the A4 page of text telling yeah. you. Yeah, it, it said something about assessing your hometown. So I thought that that was the particular focus. Um, and I, of course, I'm quite comfortable doing this town. But then you just discussed that maybe it's some, an issue more uh, personal or concerning to us. Well, I, d I thought your hometown would be. Um, but it's not my hometown. Yeah. <laughs> but so, so for the for the hometown, what I mean is where where you are. So yeah. not necessarily where you're you're born. Um, so it's I particularly in your case because I knew you were going to be travelling. Um, if you do your video on the place you're you're in while you're travelling, that would be fine as long as because what the video is about is researching for that area. What, um, how vulnerable it's likely to be to climate change. So, looking at the, the projected climate change for that region and giving us a, a, a video, a short video presentation, ideally panning the camera around and showing us, I don't know, polar bears or whatever, um, to say, look, you know, this is an ecosystem or a, a town or an environment um, that has these vulnerabilities to climate. So, by hometown, I'm meaning, yeah, wh where your feet are at that, at that time when you do the video. Okay, so it's not necessarily focused on biodiversity, but more like, for example, when you were just discussing the assignment previously, you had said that that you expected me to do something about uh, biodiversity in the Arctic, which would be just a component of something related to my hometown. So, yeah, yeah, okay, I, yeah, and and I think um, for the, the final report, which is the a major part of the assessment, which is a kind of adaptation assessment. Um, that may well be for you something which is in your sector and something which is about uh, biodiversity um, impacts. Uh, but you know, for, for the hometown thing, yeah, it might just be one of the sectors that you cover. And actually, okay. if you were, well, if I was talking about Edinburgh, um, biodiversity issues are limited. It's mainly um, about fewer people dying because of coal related death and wind. would be one of the main things I picked out for Edinburgh as my oh. home. Okay, so um, I hope nobody minds if I talk about it for a, a little bit more because I was just um, hoping to get my head around it a little bit to mm -hmm. start soon. Um, it talks about the, the one sheet paper talked a little bit about the industries in your hometown and mm -hmm. identifying how those will be affected. So like for example, fishing and farming and tourism are really big here. So that's, that's sort of where I'm going with that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? That's Absolutely. within the scope? Okay. Yeah, so what I'd expect you to do um, with your expert home knowledge is, is if you're looking at the industries which are vulnerable, is to have some insight into what the major industries are. So then you would say, okay, um, if fishing's a major industry, we know that that would be something that you would include in your video and talk about, obviously, the climate vulnerabilities for that industry are substantial and obviously tie into overfishing as well as a, as a pressure. So, so that's where you should all have a great advantage rather than me just setting you a random place is that actually you know your community and town in terms of what the important sectors are. Okay, and with that, are you anticipating that we speak to other people, conduct interviews and gather primary footage or is there some sort of footage bank that we can rely on or I don't know, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, so, so you are going to be the footage bank because you are the first people to do um, these videos and what I'd like, so, so the, the cheap way of doing it um, which I will be less impressed with is if you do what, what I'm doing now which is just talking to the screen from my office. Uh, what would be really nice is something which does um, go outside and you know show the environment a little bit, maybe even talk, like you say, to stakeholders, the people who may be affected. Um, and the, the real skill with that is how you edit it down into something which is just 10 minutes long 
so we can put it on the YouTube archive. So you've got a lot of latitude with this because there isn't a, a benchmark. So um, if you did just speak to camera and give me some kind of assessment of the impacts or projected impacts of climate change for your chosen hometown, um, you'll probably still get kind of a tick in the box. But if you can go further than that and give it a bit more richness, so the kind of thing you would like to see, I guess, if you were going on YouTube and you wanted um, to find out about how vulnerable a town or place was to climate change, um, something more than you know a bald-headed professor like me um, talking into camera uh, is probably going to be what you're after. Okay, thanks. Great. Dave, okay. can I, sorry, yeah, yeah, Rob, just ask you if, if you were able to add Alana again to. I think you may need to invite her to the hangout. Oh, okay. Let me let me try. So, uh, what do I need to press, Stuart? Guide me here. Um, invite people, I guess. Yes. Right. You uh, should be able to start typing her name, and it should auto complete. Uh, yes. Fantastic. Okay. I think that worked. Yes. So hopefully she'll be able to join us now. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Alana, could you can you hear us? It might take a minute for her to get the invitation and click through. So. Right. Um. It, I'll let you know once she's joined. I'll look out for if she pops up. So yeah, it should add another window to the bottom. She will do when she... Yes. Okay, brilliant. So the, the four of you, in terms of your course last semester, presumably, um, you did you meet every week or a couple of times a week online to discuss last semester's course? Um, it was less frequent. Okay. Is, is what I'm suggesting too frequent for what you can handle with your real lives? Am I being too ambitious with twice a week? What do you think? Um, I I think it's I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose it depends how long each session is going to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose I I thought um, that they would probably often be quite short because you would go through the lectures at the, the lecture for that day and say yeah I understand that and maybe we just have a chat uh, like we just did with Courtney about an assignment and what was expected um, and, and that would kind of be it and it's just an opportunity for me to check in with you all so um, I know you're all happy with the content and nothing's come up. If we find it's too frequent and too much of a time commitment we can drop it to once a week and then do more stuff uh, through the message boards and email if that works better. Um, it's really, you know, my main focus obviously is for the four of you to get to the end of the course knowing all the stuff that you should know and feeling confident about climate change impacts and adaptation. So, um, yeah, if I if I find on Thursday that no one is coming online, I'll get the message that you don't want to talk. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, difficult to say right now because uh, before we had like maybe once per two weeks, no, once really? per three weeks, I think. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, not every day uh, we might be available. And so just, I mean, different things happen. So like for me, sometimes I go with, uh, with my work uh, purposes, I go for... Uh, I go for a field, um, mm. so sometimes I'm quite away. From, I'm not. Uh, I have no um, chance to be connected to the internet, yeah. so difficult to say. Yeah. But I think we can try at the beginning both uh, use the discussion board and uh, like mails, uh, and well, we'll see. Uh, but personnel, I like the idea to meet uh, frequently. It's just. Uh, the point is just to make it. 
I know that real life keeps getting in the way of that kind of thing, doesn't it? I mean, I think what yeah. we'll do this this first week is we'll aim to meet again on Thursday. See, so, Alana's yeah, joined us. Joined us. Hello, Alana. Can you hear us? I can't hear you, but I can hear you speaking. I mean, I can see you speaking. Sorry. <laughs> is your is your mic muted by any chance? Yeah, my mic was muted when I first came on. I had to go to the top of the window. It's a little red button. Oh, is it working now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yay. Okay. Sorry about all that problem we had with, with signing up to the wrong um, hangout and things like that. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not, This is good. Like, I can't see any video or anything, so I should be able to, to be on here for as, as long as possible. Super. We've we've just used the last um, 30, 40 minutes uh, mainly. I was just getting to know uh, Courtney, Alex, and Indira. Um, do you want to just tell me a little bit about yourself, Alana? Now you're now you're online. Yeah, I, I've been I've been listening on the YouTube channel, so um, I heard most of what people said. Um, but um, I'm Alana. Uh, I work in South Africa for a volunteerism and um, community development organization um, as a project manager. Um, so I run, I run three different projects, um, a medical project um, that mostly deals with um, the HIV epidemic in the area um, by sending volunteers to work in clinics and do home visits um, to, to the elderly. Um, there's also a community project um, which is actually support for uh, vulnerable children and rural families. Um, and then uh, there's an education project um, where we send um, teachers to pre-primary institutions and primary institutions to teach HIV education. Um, and of course, pre-primary institutions to teach um, primary education, not HIV education. Um, and uh, I live in a, an area in South Africa called KwaZulu-Natal. Um, in Zululand in the very north, about um, an hour and a half, two hours away from the Mozambique border. Right. Um, and it's uh, probably the area with the most HIV infections in the world, so it's, it's very interesting. But um, I also live in a UNESCO World Heritage Site um, that's a very interesting sort of, it ha it's home to eight different ecosystems. Um, so it's a, it's a very fascinating place to, to to live and work and, and to study as well. So, yeah. um, and I'm part of the the MSc in global development. Okay, fantastic. I mean, actually, between the so we were talking. Hopefully, you heard it. So, I was talking to Courtney about the the video and about the assessments um, through the course and the fact that you know, hopefully, we can draw on some of your your home locations or your your expertise from the areas you're working in. And actually, between the four of you, you cover. You cover some majorly different ecosystems and different places on the planet, which is pretty exciting. Um, so, uh, I guess it sounds like you on YouTube you followed most of what we were talking about. Was there anything else, Alana, that um, that you felt you wanted to say when you were listening on YouTube but couldn't? Um, no, I, I I agree with Courtney that I was a little bit confused as to um, w what my hometown was because <laughs> I wasn't sure how to. Film in my hometown while being over here, um, but I understand we can use I can use this hometown. Um, but other than that, um, I would be a little bit concerned. I think uh, the last sort of question I heard before I I joined was about um, how many times we would meet, um, mm. and I would be a, a little bit concerned. But if we kept um, meeting sort of short, um, then I, I think it would be. It would help me keep on top of the readings and the coursework, perhaps if we if we met um, briefly but often. Yeah. Well, let's let's go with that. Certainly for this week, let's let's try and meet on on Thursday at four o'clock um, UK time. Um, and what we can do is, we'll, I think we will keep it short. But even if you can't make it or you need to drop out early, because we're recording all of these onto YouTube. Um, you can always, when you're, you know, sitting down with a glass of wine or whatever later that day, um, revisit them. Or if you're having trouble sleeping, you can even uh, log on and watch them. So I think um, we'll, we'll go with that twice a week, certainly for this week, and we'll see how it evolves. If we end up um, so excited that we need to put aside um, that full hour 
Tuesday and Thursday, then that's that's a success. If we find it's five minutes just to say, hey, yeah, it's still working, no technical problems, um, then that's great too. So we'll watch that space. But if um, you're all up for it, should we meet again at 4 p.m. UK time on Thursday? And with a view to you of having looked at the first and second lecture, uh, and so we can discuss anything that's come up then, and particularly things, um, things, technical issues that may have uh, occurred if you can't see the videos, that kind of thing. Uh, and we'll see whether it's a long chat or a short chat or something in between. Um, I won't be able to attend on Thursday or the following Tuesday. Apologies. Okay. Julie, no to come. And the rest. Rest of you um, make that time. That's fine. Great. <laughs> so it might just be you and me and you, Alex. And Dira. It might be. That's okay. <laughs> you can bring your cat. I will. I've locked him out. <laughs> he bites. <laughs> Indira, can you make Thursday at four o'clock? So the same times this. Um, I can make Thursday, but can I ask, um, like, make it two two hours earlier? Because. Very early. Uh, be more com uh, more comfortable for me because for now it's a little bit late for me. So okay, and, uh, it would be really um, it will be perfect for me. Like I, I will be I will finish my work and I could keep going with the so it would be more comfortable. What time would that make it for you, Alex, and you, Alana? Alex, what time? Um, I'm four hours ahead of you, Dave. So okay. um, I could. Just do six um, my time, um, but earlier than that, I wouldn't have finished work. And how about you, Alana? What time is it there? Um, I may be a little bit late. Um, our projects finish at four thirty, and ne and um, I run a garbage collection like project on a Thursday afternoon. So. Um, I'll be I'll be a little bit late, likely if if we do two o'clock instead of this time. I could I could do like the middle and and maybe an hour earlier. Yeah. Um, well, how about three p.m. in there? How about that's a good compromise. Should you go for three p.m. on Thursday then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then every, yeah. everyone's unhappy or everyone's happy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go for that. And yeah. Um, Courtney, if you want to just catch up on YouTube, if you get a chance and see what we discuss. Uh, but generally, I should have said, actually, if you've got any queries that come up and you just want to get in touch, either Skype me. I think I've got, you, you've all got me on Skype and I've got your Skype. Or drop me an email. Um, and, you know, most of the, the time I can get back to you pretty quickly. So just do that. And obviously, Stuart and his team um, on the technical side, if anything comes up, uh, they respond really quickly. They usually tell me off for um, using the wrong email address. So, <laughs> I was just a bit of paste that in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so um, yeah. Remember that uh, you know basically contact wise, just to stay in touch, even if you miss the the Tuesday or Thursday uh, catch up online. Brilliant. I think that's probably it for today. Um, anything else anyone wanted to add? Or I'll let you get on with your days or evenings. Um, I've, I've got nothing else to add, Dave. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Great to meet you all. And Great. glad Thank you could get connected, Lana. And, uh, Thank I'll... you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. It's our fault, I think. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll see you on Thursday. So take care. Okay. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.